the Dynamo song. Oh, I don't, I don't know the Dynamo song. Uh, hey, everybody! It's a uh, super tie comic book Brando. We were just discussing Running Man. The Running Man. Yeah, if you uh, guys haven't seen it recently, you should definitely give it another shot. But uh, the film based on the written works of mystery writer Richard Bachman. Richard Bachman, yes, and his other great movie, uh, you know, Thinner. If you remember that one, wasn't Monkey Shines also? Uh... No, Monkey Shines was Stephen King. Oh, okay. Um, Anyways, it's a new comic book day tomorrow. It is. Which is going to be February 13th, uh, Valentine's Day Eve. Oh. Yeah. I didn't know we were doing Valentine's Eve. Yeah, well, why not? Um, More cards. So we uh, have a lot of really cool stuff that we're going to be talking about today. We also have some really cool announcements at the end of the video, so be sure to stay tuned for that. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, uh, thoughts on Running Man, uh, you know, let us know in the comments and we'll be more than happy to answer as quick as possible. What was uh, Jesse the Body's character? Was it Captain, Captain Freedom. Freedom. Yes, like and he Victor? had a workout vid video in it and uh, he was also a commentator and his hair was luxurious. Had to come back. Yeah. Had to so come good. back. But he didn't really actually fight Arnold. No, no, no. Like, he never actually fought him. They spliced footage. Yeah. In, like, some really crazy... And after that, he just kind of disappeared. He didn't yeah, come back. Movie, the yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Running man. Anyways. Making you think. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so here's a good question to ask everybody. What is your favorite Stephen King movie and your favorite Arnold Schwarzenegger movie? Probably Maximum Overdrive. What, really? I love okay. Maximum Overdrive. I get that it's not a good movie, but I love it. No, it's fine. Um, Favorite Arnold movie. Although probably the best Stephen King movie is probably Misery. Um, my favorite Arnold movie, man, it's either gonna be Conan or or Total Recall. Oh man, okay, so uh, I'm gonna say Shawshank Redemption. Oh yeah, that's that is, really good. Uh, that's one movie that I could just watch no matter where it is in the movie. I'll just finish it until it's done. Uh, best Arnold. Damn. Gonna maybe uh, the uh, Commando. Commando's definitely up John there. Matrix. What a name. Bennett, let off some steam. Let off some steam. Uh, oh, James is a. Uh, uh, um, Commando. Yeah, and uh, Christine. <laughs> I could never get into Christine, though, because I can't find a car menacing, you know? Yeah, I mean, the, the kid's creepy. The I kid's know. great in it. The guy who plays the main character, he's awesome. It's just like, oh, okay. I like the novel better. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, let's not forget, um, what was it, Sleepwalkers with the cat people? Not good. Not good at all. It's all out in the theater. <laughs> Anyways, let's get, uh, let's get going here. Comics. Comic stuff. Well, maybe we should have another podcast or video cast about, you know, just like crappy 80s movies. Fred likes Conan, T2, Total Recall. Yeah. I mean, it's dead on mine, except I'm not a big T2 fan. Edward Furlong just sort of kills it for me. I know. I'm the only person, I'm the only red blooded American male that does not like Terminator 2. Man. I love the first Terminator. I love the first Terminator too, but the second one is just like too, man. I cried my eyes out. Teaches them how to smile and stuff. Yeah, it's Ugh. great. The thumb, Ugh. the thumb. Oh, god, uh. stupid. Anyways, Magic Order number six. We are ending the first story arc of Mark Millar and Olivier Coipel's. Uh, I think I said it right this time. Coipel. Coipel's uh, story arc about a magical family. I think uh, Harry Potter meets Goodfellas. Essentially, it's a mob. <laughs> It's heavier on the good fellas. Yeah, heavier on the good fellas. Uh, after the last issue's really big twist and surprise of who the actual bad guy is, and all the fallout is happening in this. This is an oversized issue as well. It has a lot of extra pages in there to fill out the rest of the story. It's been an awesome read. Oh yeah, it's great. And uh, it's uh, in true Mark Millar fashion. It says end of book one. So <laughs> there will have to be another book two lately. So it doesn't have to be. So, uh, yeah, I really enjoyed this series. It was really fun. Uh, Olivier Coipel is actually one of my favorite artists, so I love seeing him work. <laughs> Brad says the T-1000 is why he likes T-2, and that is fair. Robert Patrick is really awesome in that movie. He's yeah. definitely the best part. Yeah. And that is probably his greatest thing, because uh, Sad, Detter, and The Sopranos was not so great. Uh, <laughs> I mean, he, was, he was good at it. He was in X-Files for a little while. Uh, but, th dude, the movie The Faculty, where he was the coach, <laughs> he was great in that. He, was, he basically played T-1000, yeah. the coach. When he was, like, running, I was just like, hey, that's yeah, that's T-1000. That's funny. James is very excited about Umbrella Academy and Magic Order on Netflix, as are we all. Also, this Friday, the Doom Patrol show premieres. Debuts. Yeah, I'm nice. really stoked about that. All right, speaking of stoked, Savage Sword of Conan, another Conan series. Um, so what's cool about Conan is 
uh, whenever you would get like a, a, a long run or, or multiple titles, it always like shows you different aspects of Conan's life. It's never chronological, right. so you're going to see like, oh, this is when he was thieving across the, the continent, or this is when he was a pirate. Yeah. You know, this is what's going on when he's the king. Um, so you're getting like different stuff, different eras. Uh, this Savage Sword story starts off with him basically stranded in the sea, mm. half dead, mad, and uh, we'll see where he goes from there. Awesome stuff. Really enjoying the new Conan direction, which just feels like classic Conan. Yeah. Uh, Marvel's knocking out of the park. Gary Dugan is the writer on mm -hmm. this one uh, with Ron Garney artwork. Yeah. Uh, great looking book. Very cool. If you have been enjoying the Jason Aaron Conan, I implore you to also check out Savage Sword. My next one is my favorite book on shelves right now, Gideon Falls. This actually wraps up the story arc of called Original Sins. So this is the end of the second story arc and a uh, little couple of mind blowers here. Also, uh, Andrea Sorrentino's artwork in this is just fantastic. Like here, I'll just show you, I'll just show you this. Like, I, how do you plot that? How do you panel this out? Like, and what direction does he receive from a writer to just be like, yeah, just show a lot of stuff. And he's like, oh, okay. And he just makes that. That's crazy good. Uh, if you like spooky, David Lynchian, uh, haunted people, not haunted houses, but like a person being haunted, this series is definitely for you. My favorite book on shelves right now. So Brad says, by Crom. Yeah. Benjamin is also very much looking forward to Savage Sword. Mm -hmm. And Brad chimes in that Gideon Falls is his favorite image series. Such a good book. Very good. Captain Marvel 2. So Cap has like gone into a warp in Roosevelt Island uh, that had closed up right behind her and shuts out all the rest of the Avengers. Uh, we're going to find out what is in Roosevelt Island in this issue. As you can tell, you got some kind of like uh, some... some uh, Looks like they've been around this situation for a while. You got Jessica mm -hmm. Drew. Uh, you've got Echo, who yeah. is alive. Yeah. And Hazmat. Um, awesome surprises. The villain Nuclear Man, who used to be Machismo, yeah. uh, is, has something to do with everything. And uh, very cool start to this series. Really enjoying the, the new direction for Captain Marvel. Um, I think she's going to be the character to look out for this year. So get on board. My next one is Thor, number 10. This is uh, leading up to the War of Realms. This is actually kind of a self-contained story involving Odin and Thor. Now, don't let the cover fool you. Uh, this isn't a happy issue. This is actually an all-out brawl. Like, kind of a settling of scores between a uh, man and his father. Um, awesome art by Mike Del Mundo, who is also one of my favorite artists going on right now. Uh, it's really just setting up everything it's getting there but there was like some really like touching moments in this where odin's like thinking like you know just tell the boy you love him but he just like punches him in the face instead so it's a good odin thing. very very odin-esque kind of stuff so uh i still love this series jason aaron killing it i can't wait until a war of realms happens to see what you know goes on there frost giants and dark elves and avengers and yeah it's coming up yeah James suggests uh, Gideon's fall. Gideon Falls is yeah. uh, David Lynchian. Very much David Lynchian. So between uh, Odin-esque and Lynchian, I I'm just got some coming excellent up with terms stuff. here. Yeah. Uh, also, James says the Thor series is awesome. It is. Uh, Detective Comics 998, the countdown to 1000 continues. So someone is working their way through uh, Batman's mentors, the people that made him who he is. And he doesn't know who and he doesn't know why, uh, but he's stopping off and uh, going to talk to Jason Blood, who is also the demon Etrigan. Mm -hmm. um, so that uh, he was a, a very important person in Batman's sort of becoming. And uh, so now he needs to see if there's any information that he might have. We're going to find something out in this issue. Uh, a little bit of a hint to where this is going. So dive in, get caught up, Batman. Uh, so Age of X-Man is still going on. And this is the start of another one of the little mini series that's going to be happening. It's called Next Gen. So it takes place in all the you know the different schools at the summers institute and you know there's like four different things that you can study for it's like agriculture law enforcement civil management 
and uh, medicine. And you get sorted out into where you are in this. And it mostly follows Glom Herman. If you're not familiar with this character, he's kind of been big in the past couple of years with X-Men books. Um, but all these students are, you know, just like they're ready to, you know, graduate, do their jobs and stuff. But there's a little monkey wrench thrown into the, the cogs of everything. And Glom might actually know the secret behind everything. Oh. Yeah, so, uh, and Glom Herman's actually a really cool character. Didn't Morrison create him? I believe so. I think he showed up in, originally in uh, New X. Yeah, so he's just like this pink translucent dude, and you see all his organs and bones and stuff, but he's like actually coated in this wax that can be set on fire. And it's just like, I really like how this issue particularly focuses on the mutations that aren't always the most helpful, mm -hmm. you know, and not the most pretty, uh, because that's, you know. That was the whole Morrison thing. That was the point like, of it. Yeah, we can't all have cool optic blasts. And, yeah, and, uh, somebody's gonna look like a half shark. That's just how it is. So, uh, really dug it. I'm, I'm digging all of this Age of X Men stuff. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> Brad says Jason Aaron's writing an epic Thor, and uh, they wear Cerebro as a sorting hat. Cerebro as a sorting hat. That's funny. Criminal number two. Man, this was exactly the issue that's like just yep i absolutely love this book this creative pairing is perfect and i love them and everything they do is my speed nice. so ed brubaker sean phillips crime noir this one is set in 1997 and we have a, an old comic artist with a, a checkered past he's hmm. known as a pretty mean bad guy and they name drop like a lot of like real life creators and kind of like in situations and oh that's cool uh, uh you know having stories about this guy uh he requests that one of his former uh, uh assistants helps him out at a con where they're celebrating his lifetime achievements uh why is he doing that well you're gonna find out in this issue but it's not uh, it's not perfectly legal so I love this book. I cannot recommend it enough. You should be reading Criminal. Uh, definitely lots of trades to get caught up on, or you could, most of them you could just pick up and enjoy on their own, no matter which one you grab, because they're fairly self-contained, even though they're part of a larger world. Mm. Also a great backup story about the movie, or a backup, backup piece about the movie, Angels with Dirty Faces. Oh. Yeah. My next one is The Batman Who Laughs number three. So. Bruce Wayne, or at least one of them, is at those wits end. You know, he's uh, fighting the Batman who laughs, uh, this Punisher Batman um, also is there, and he's trying to get help from Jim Gordon's son, who, if you're not familiar with this, he is a crazy psycho killer. He has his own past. So uh, it's, it's just like pure desperation. You finally get to see Bruce Wayne at his most desperate. Like, he is willing to try anything. And that usually never works out for him when he's trying the absolute last thing he can think of. Uh, I can think of tons of instances in the past, and yet here's another one that is just happening. Uh, awesome artwork by Jock, who, like, he just gets this, this kind of, like, dark, dirty feel to it. Uh, I've been loving this series, uh, although I'm kind of glad it's just going to be a six-issue miniseries. I don't want it to be an ongoing where, you know... Yeah, how long can that character be viable within... Yeah. Or how long can you keep the intensity of the character up? Because if you keep using him over and over again, then it'll just be like, okay, well, that's the Batman who laughs, you know. Eventually he becomes a hero. Yeah, exactly. No so, one wants that. Yeah, so I'm really glad this is just going to maintain just like a mini series because it keeps the, you know, suspense ratcheted up. What's happening here? Uh, so Brad says, Brubaker and Phillips might be the most consistent creative team for the past 10 years. Also, loving Batman who laughs, especially Jock's. Correct. Outdoors. It's so good. Jock is one of my absolute favorite artists. Amazing Spider-Man number 15. So Craven the Hunter is cooking up something big. We're not really sure what it is, but it has something to do with Black Ant and Taskmaster, Taskmaster uh, apprehending various Spider-Man villains. Mm. Um, also, Spidey's in a situation where the last issue left off with uh, Aunt May in oh, okay. dire straits. She mm. was... Uh, looking like in a, in a bad bad situation so we're gonna find out what happens in this issue is that an art germ cover no that is paolo rivera oh okay it just looks very art germy paolo rivera yeah. yeah you're right uh my next one is i didn't know what to think of this but i read it and i loved it it is the wonder twins book activate yeah zan and jana um 
So the whole premise of this is they are, they get brought to earth by Superman because their dad wants them to have like a different experience in their home world. And they're just kind of like trying the life. Uh, they have a little job over at the Hall of Justice. They're going to high school. Uh, parts of this are genuinely hilarious. Like they're, when Jan, or when Zan starts talking about like the mating season on his home world to a bunch of like high schoolers as a presentation, it's like pretty darn hilarious. Uh, I really dug this. I'm I, pretty much everything Wonder Comics has been doing. I've been really digging. Like you know the uh, um, Young Justice was really good. What was the one that uh, it's just about the girl Naomi? Naomi, thank you. And then uh, of course we got Dell H for Hero coming up yeah. pretty soon as well. So. Really fun, really worth checking out. Uh, and look at this awesome variant cover by Dustin Wynn. I yeah, love that guy. A great cover. Yeah. Brad says Nick Spencer's been doing uh, superb work on Spidey. I absolutely yeah. agree. 100%. David says Aloha. Aloha. And if you're wondering if the monkey has shown up in Wonder Twins yet, not yet. What's the monkey's name? Uh, isn't it Gleep? That's right. Yeah. I keep thinking of Blip, but that's the Space Ghost. That's Coast. Space Ghost monkey. Yeah. yeah. Mark Russell's the reason Brad is picking up Wonder Twins, because the Flintstones was awesome, too. Yeah, he did write the Flintstones book, which was an amazing piece of fiction. Right on. Yeah. Speaking of our germ. Oh, yeah, there it is. Wonder Woman. Uh, this is the G. Willow Wilson run. It's been very excellent. Uh, I really love what she's doing with the gods, uh, and some of them have basically escaped a bad situation, and are just kind of, like, hanging out in Earth. Yeah, gambling uh, debts. Aphrodite's just palling around and like kind of I mean it's hard it's hard for Steve Trevor to say sweet things to Diana and then just get kind of like dumped on by the goddess of love yeah uh, pretty funny stuff there uh, but there's a, a major revelation here Veronica Kale has a has a grudge mm. and she has some information well, no and Wonder Woman is going to pay dearly for that information this is a really cool issue that's brought by the creators and writers and artists of the Avengers No Surrender. It's called Avengers No Road Home. So this also involves a lot of Greek gods where Hercules, he gets this kind of message from his family that something bad's happening and he gets to Olympus with all these different Avengers and they're all dead. Like something bad happened. Ooh. And uh, the person who tells him this is Voyager, if you remember Voyager from No Surrender. Uh, Really interesting dynamics happening this because you're going to have Clint Barton and the Immortal Hulk. Well, they don't get along because Clint Barton kind of shot him in the back of the head. But you also get the Vision and he's with Scarlet Witch, but she's kind of like, you know, dating Brother Voodoo because of No Surrender. So, like, it's going to be a really interesting ride. You got the art uh, writers of Al Ewing, Jim Zub, and Mark Wade. These are all very solid writers. Going to be doing another, I think this is just a maxi series of 12 issues. Super solid. I, I liked this a whole lot. I'm gonna be reading it. I'm gonna reread No Surrender just so I can make sure I remember everything for this. Voyager Manipulator. Yes. Kick-Ass number 12. This wraps up this story arc and Kick-Ass is in a bad situation. She has a, an enemy who has a mean, mean rage boiling and is basically suited up like the Juggernaut. It's pretty much unstoppable. Uh, she's taking on the last crime family in her town, mm. and things are not looking good for her at all. I've uh, been really enjoying Steve Niles' take on this character. It's been a lot of fun. It's been intense. Uh, but there's like a, a heart to it that, you know, is, is fairly new, you know, fairly different. So I dig this, and I recommend it. It's a really good read. Uh, Shame says, or I'm sorry, Benjamin says, gonna check out No Road Home. Heard Conan is showing up in issue six. Yes, he is. Really? Uh, yeah. Um, some time travel biz is gonna be happening here. Oh. And uh, <laughs> Veacher, nice. Star Trek, the first movie. Oh, good God, I don't remember that movie. Oh yeah, well, I slept through that whole thing multiple man, times. How how much should I worry about nearly forty year old spoilers? spoilers. Uh, Go ahead. Okay, so the, if you aren't familiar with V'ger, uh giant cloud full of, like, you know, death and destruction is heading towards Earth. Star Trek people go out to check it out. It's actually Voyager, the satellite that was actually sent into space, like, a year earlier. Uh, and it called itself V'ger because, like, some smudge got on its, uh, like, side, and so it just called itself V'ger. What a bad movie. The movie is awesome. 
Infinity Wars. The <laughs> it's okay if you don't like it. I Wrath like of Khan it. is awesome. Wrath of Khan is good too. But I also <laughs> say it's good too. It's it's good. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. And so is the first Star Trek movie. I liked it. Some people thought it was slow. The but motionless picture. It it had stuff. Anyway, and I always had a. Uh, <laughs> Brad, par- Brad says you're correct. <sighs> Pausing for a second here, I also thought it would have been a cool thing as if they made V'ger, because at the end of that, there uh, it takes over this body of this alien who is in love with the first captain of the Enterprise, and they get together at the end of it. I thought, oh, that would be a really great creation of the Borg, if this like mach- machine and like human offspring was like this weird cyborg that wanted to assimilate everybody. Anyways, enough Star Trek fandom that here. That would be a cool thing. Shut up. <laughs> Infinity Wars. So the uh, blockbuster event that happened over the summer, and actually not the summer, the winter, right? It started in the summer, I guess. Mm, yeah, probably. Yeah, it started the late summer and went on through the winter. It actually just ended like last month, I believe. Anyways, somebody is out to get all the Infinity Stones to wreak havoc on the world as we know it. And the best way to do that is to fold it in on itself. So that's how you get characters like the Soldier Supreme or Weapon Hex. Or the Arachnite, where it's, you know, just all these different people mashed together to make this, like, new world that people are living in. A lot of surprises in this. Started off with a bang with uh, Thanos getting, like, (laughs) um, and then a lot of other crazy things happening in this as well. Uh, So, I liked it. I thought it was really cool. Mike Diodato did the artwork in all of it, and Jerry Duggan, this was kind of like his swan song for um, his Guardians of the Galaxy run as well. Mm. Yeah, so... uh, and this also directly leads into the new Guardians of the Galaxy series by Donny Cates and Jeff Shaw. So I really dug this. You should definitely check it out. If you want big cosmic spanning craziness, this is it. Brad says Wrath of, Wrath of Khan is the best. Correct. I didn't say it was the worst. <laughs> it is the best. Benjamin says Star Trek The Mushroom Picture is underrated in his opinion. Thank you. Ha Vindication. What's your next one? Oh, man. You were never a Star Trek guy, though. The original series. You didn't even like Next Generation? Man, there's some good stuff in there. I, I like some of it. Okay. It's all right. Okay. I like the characters. A lot of the episodes are really hard to get through. Definitely a good sleep aid. All right. Hit Girl in Hollywood. So this is a new Hit Girl series. Uh, again, continuing her world tour. Uh, and now she's being taken to La La Land by Kevin Smith. And... Pernil Orum. Hmm. Uh, as an artist, I don't know, but I really like their style. Um, some pretty shocking moments in this one. Uh, whereas Kickass has heart, Hit Girl has a lot of violence. Huevos. Yeah. Um, or a ninja star to them. Yeah. Ugh. So, yeah, check that out if you like a good violent book. Uh, it has it uh, in plenty uh, supply. My next one is My Solo Exchange Diary 2. This is actually the th- second sequel to my lesbian experience with loneliness. Um, not gonna lie, haven't read the first one or the second one, but I do know this is a very popular book with a lot of people that come in here. A lot of our uh, co-workers... Extremely popular book. A lot of our co-workers and a lot of our you know regulars, they really love this book. I'll get to it eventually once I finish reading the stack of things I got at home. Especially all the stuff I just bought from the sidekick sale again. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, so far, I think I'm up to $280 that You're I spent. You're all doing impressive work over there, by the way. Yeah. I loved going through the line and just seeing, like, the boxes full of graphic novels. It's crazy. Yeah. Pretty fun times. Benjamin loves Diodato. Would love to see another Tigra run by him. That'd be cool. And Brad loves The Next Generation. If there's one thing I know about Brad... He's a fan of the next generation. Well, yeah. Okay, so Brad, do you remember in the first season when there was this huge conspiracy with these like brain bugs, and they never went back to it? <laughs> did you Did you know about this? I don't remember it. Okay, so like in the very last episode, you find out there's this huge infestation that's taking over Starfleet. It's and the they, last episode of the first season. Yeah, and they never go back to it, really? not once. Which makes me think the every, infestation worked. Every other season is a dream. Yep. Yeah, who knows, man? Uh, what's your next one? <laughs> The Immortal Hulk, Volume 2, The Green Door. Man, this storyline was killer. Uh, Hulk is basically gonna go to hell. Yep. Um, and the door to that hell is Crusher Creel. That's it. The Absorbing Man. Um, 
again. Oh, like, yeah, that one. Yeah, that crazy issue where God, this book is Hulk so ends up in a very weird situation. Um, big things happening. Gamma is uh, not just the power that turned Bruce Banner into the Hulk, but also just like a very intense evil, apparently. Um, it's just been so good. So this is the, your second chapter. Get into it. It's It'll knock your socks off. It's the best Hulk has been in a long, long time. Oh, yeah. Most definitely. My last one is, uh, I know a lot of people are waiting for this one. Uh, Mr. Miracles finally collected all 12 issues in this one thing. Man, the best way I can describe it is just pure insanity, but with heart and love. Um, not just from the characters within it, but from the creators themselves. It's like ruminations on fatherhood, but also your own mortality, but also, you know, judging your own reality. Man, it's everything. It very much deserves the, you know, Eisners that it got for Best Writer and Best Artist. It fantastic series. I'm going to be buying this tomorrow because this needs to be on everybody's bookshelf. It's amazing. Like, this and The Vision are probably the best comics I've read in the past five years. Ah, oh, so good. Brad remembers the episode, also points out Riker was never clean shaven after the first season. Yeah, it's, right. It's because the brain bug brain likes, bugs. likes the beard. Benjamin says Immortal Hulk is a run for the ages. Absolutely is. And Brad continues with Q is such a great protagonist. <laughs> Hulk and Mr. Miracle are so amazing. Words don't do them justice. Correct. Yeah, they are fantastic books. Speaking of Jungle Girls. So all your favorite jungle based uh, heroines of the 1940s through 50s. We've got Sheena, Queen of the Jungle, uh, Princess Panther, Fantoma is one of my personal Oh, Fantoma's favorites. in there? Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Uh, Rula, Tigra, and you're getting artists like Frazetta, uh, Bob Powell, Fran Hopper, Jack Kamen is another one of my favorites, Matt Baker, Baker's Women, is some of the most famous women in comics. Mm -hmm. Awesome stuff. Curated collection by Craig Yoey. Mm -hmm. uh, very cool stuff and just a neat thing to flip through and enjoy some classic covers some great old golden age art if you want some gorillas wearing uh, helmets and battle axes this is the thing for you yeah good stuff it's amazing stuff must read so let's talk about what's going on this week what do you got well tonight we're going to be streaming some Dungeons and Dragons over at Outlaw Moon it is the World Born of Dragonfire campaign very excited about that We've got a Friday Night Magic is going to be the usual commander style fun. However, Saturday over at Outlaw Moon at 2 p.m. we're having a uh, Ravnica weekend booster draft. Oh, cool. So you buy three Ravnica Legions packs, you get involved in a draft, and we'll have a sweet play mat to give away to whoever wins that little mini tournament. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, this weekend, Saturday and Sunday, is the last week of Sidekick, as of right now. The final showdown. Yes, yeah, so there's a lot of really cool stuff happening. I should have looked it up on my phone earlier, but I remember it. Uh, trades and hardcovers, dollar. Crazy. Yeah, we're going to be having some uh, bulk boxes, just boxes filled with stuff for a very, very low price. Um, I will say this, if you can bring your own bags and boxes, that'd be very helpful because we've kind of been going through all of ours. You have run us out of boxes. Every yeah, week. so please try and bring your own bags and boxes. That'd be very helpful. Uh, if not, I'm sure we could help you take them to your car and everything. Hopefully this weekend won't be rainy and gloomy like last weekend. Um, and hopefully I won't find anything else to buy because I'm spending way too much money over there. It's the final countdown. It is. Uh, what else? Um... What else you got? We'll have a game night Saturday night at Outlaw Moon. So choose your own games. We've got lots of demo games. We bring lots of games. I'm going to be bringing uh, Battle for Greyport, which is a deck building card game uh, based off of the Red Dragon Inn characters. Oh, that's cool. I'm very stoked about that. Picked that up last week. Got to read the instructions, and then we'll have a, a five player group tackle one of the encounters. That's cool. Uh,. Oh, Saturday I'm playing a show at Skull Mechanics Brewery down on Ben White and I-35. The uh, place has really awesome beers. They have a food truck that has chicken and waffle skewers, yeah. which I'm all about. Uh, we're going to be playing, uh, Laser Tusk is going to be playing with a band called Spaces. They start at 9, we start at 10. So if you want to come by for that, uh, 
I appreciate it. Sweet. You get to see me uh, drink a lot and play some music. Get yourself some chicken and waffle skewers. Hell yes, I am. Get a brewski. It's going to be great. Uh, but other than that, I don't really have anything off the top of my head other than this big sale that's going to be happening this weekend. It's going to be crazy. Yeah. I mean, every week has been crazier and crazier. And now we're just going to be selling things for a dollar. So it's probably going to hit uh, ludicrous. <sighs> yes, it is. Can't wait. But, uh, but if, if you don't got anything else, uh, you can follow me at Super Ty Denton one You can follow you at Comic Book Brandon. And you can follow both of us at Austin Books. And we will see you tomorrow on Valentine's Day Eve. Cha-cha. Buy comics for your sweetie.